In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. It is a great joy, dear friends, to celebrate this Easter Mass. I am Bishop Michael Burbage of the Diocese of Arlington, and together we rejoice in the new life that is ours in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, 
but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal lamb, Christ has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, uh, allow me to begin by wishing you and your families the peace and joy of our risen Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We sang these words in our responsorial psalm today because Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. He is alive and with us and raises us to new life, both now and forever. Allow these truths on Easter Sunday to penetrate your heart. Allow these truths to be those which you enthusiastically proclaim to others. In my diocese, the Diocese of Arlington, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary as a diocese. And in this final year of preparation, we have embraced the word renew as our theme. It is also a perfect word to reflect upon on this Easter Sunday. Be renewed in faith as we reflect upon the meaning of the suffering and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which reflect his love for us, a love without limit, a love that knows no end. He was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. He took on all the world had to offer, its darkness, its betrayal, its ridicule, its physical suffering and pain, and was not defeated. Darkness was dispelled. Suffering's been transformed to glory. And even death has been conquered. Be renewed in faith and in the love of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And dear friends, allow our risen Lord to renew you, to renew your perseverance, 
and your strength and your joyful hope, even as you carry the daily crosses and burdens and sufferings in life. Be reminded of the words of Pope Francis who tells us, do not be crushed, do not be defeated, do not lose hope. Because he says Easter is the feast of the tombstones being rolled away, of the stones being cast aside, the stones of our, our loneliness, our sins, our fear, our worldliness. And so do not despair. Be filled with joyful hope and anticipation. If you are burdened, for example, by the darkness of sin and temptation, be renewed in God's rich mercy so that, as St. Paul says, we can let go of the old yeast and become a fresh batch of dough. If you are suffering physically, emotionally, or mentally, be renewed in the Lord's healing love, for He promises to give you the bodily and spiritual graces that you need. If you are dealing with loneliness, be renewed in knowing that the Lord is near. Never will He abandon you. And if you are mourning the death of loved ones, be renewed in the eternal pledge of life forever that God promises to all those who unite their sufferings to His. And dear friends, today we renew. We renew shortly our baptismal promises. Because as the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel tell us today, we, like the disciples, are commissioned, chosen, compelled to be witnesses of the risen Lord through the example and the integrity of our lives. So renew today your promise to stay strong and steadfast in faith. Renew your promise to pray fervently and consistently, to obey the Word and the ways of God even when others reject them. Renew your pledge to serve and to love our brothers and sisters who are in most need through your generosity and kindness and compassion. You see, in all these ways, we truly live the baptismal promises we are about to renew. And by doing so, with the grace of God, we will inspire others to follow in the ways of His beloved Son, our risen Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, allow the truths that unite us on this Easter Sunday to renew you in faith. And as true witnesses who boldly, lovingly, and enthusiastically Proclaim to others the faith that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord, the one who was raised from the dead and is alive and with us. No wonder we sing, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, Alleluia.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. With the joy of the resurrection renewed in our hearts, we now turn to our Heavenly Father and offer Him our needs and prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God will strengthen him to be a faithful servant of the gospel and a voice of peace and hope in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, legislators, judges, and all those in service to the common good, that through the gift of heavenly wisdom, they may never tire in their commitment to uphold religious freedom, the sanctity of marriage, and the dignity of all human life from the first moment of conception until natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the conflict and tensions around the world, especially in Ukraine and the Middle East. May they be transformed by the peace that comes from God the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will devote their lives in loving service to the poor, to immigrants and refugees, the marginalized, the sick and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the joyful celebration of the resurrection will inspire a deeper faith in all members of the church, and encourage within them a desire to share that faith with others, 
and the perennial mission of evangelization, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will recognize the gifts God has given them and be open to using those gifts in the vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions we hold in our hearts, as well as those enrolled in the National Shrine's Easter Novena and the Shrine's Prayer Guild Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died may now share in the glory of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son's victory over sin and death has brought new hope and life to all creation. Hear our prayers on this holy day and lead us to share in the fullness of the new life in your eternal kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, my brother Wilton, the bishop of this church, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen, in the, fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my, under my roof, but only, but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, with all of you, I thank all those who assisted with us today in the celebration of the Mass and who make it possible to bring it uh, to all of you. We are also thankful for those who enhanced our prayer and our celebration today with such beautiful music and for all who assisted at the altar. My dear friends in Christ, I know that many of you at home are carrying some heavy crosses and burdens. So let me first reassure you of our deep thanks for your faithful witness. As you unite your sufferings and crosses to the Lord in the sure and certain faith that is ours, the joyful hope of his presence among us, you are an inspiration to us. Thank you for your witness. And we know that your suffering is never in vain. I'm sure you offer your suffering for special intentions perhaps now especially for peace in our world and unity in our nation and in our church, praying for holy families and for an increase of vocations to priesthood and consecrated life. And although at times you may feel alone, know that you are not. God is always there with you to embrace you in his love and his mercy, especially in your time of need. He only asks that you draw near to him. It is my hope and my prayer that your hearts and your homes and the hearts and homes of your family members will be filled with the peace and the joy of our risen Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass.
Everything changed from that moment I found out I was pregnant. Without the Knights of Columbus donating these ultrasounds to the Women's Care Center, I don't think I would have ever have kept my son. I wanted to either put him up for adoption or I was either going to have an abortion. I was still in high school. I was so scared. I was so nervous. But when I saw him, my baby on the ultrasound, and I heard his heartbeat, I remember just falling in love with. It was a tiny little peanut. That's when I'm like, I, I want to keep him. This is my child. So I'm very grateful for getting the opportunity to have and see my son. And just that changed my life completely. Thank you, Knights of Columbus.